Last year was a great time here on the YouTube channel. That was when the Full Face Friday series was in full effect. I used to do the Full Face Friday theme song. Even some of you sent me your versions of the Full Face theme song, which was super fun. That did eventually come to an end like many good things. And since then I've just been reviewing brands at random, doing full faces here and there as new products come in. But it has been a long time since I did a lot of those brands and I wanted to update a few of the older ones because some brands have come out with like tons of new products since then that might be better than the products I did before. And I know you guys love the full face videos here on the channel and those are definitely some of my most watched videos. So I wanted to start updating a few of the ones that are a little bit more outdated. And today we're going to be doing Tarte. So my full face of Tarte from last year was, oh my God, I don't know what happened. I remember something happening, but the lighting in that video is so horrible. It's so yellow. And I remember at the time thinking it wasn't that bad, but now looking back at it, I'm like, good God. <laughs> It's literally like someone had a lemon explosion all over. It was really bad. So I thought that we would start there. And they've also had a ton of new releases that I've picked up and have been using behind the scenes. Some I've been using in the videos and that I've really been enjoying. So I thought it would be a good time to do an updated full face of Tarte. But I also wanted to dive a little deeper, have a chat on my thoughts on the brand overall. I'm gonna zoom you in and let's get started. Is my face close enough? Can you see? <laughs> In general, when it comes to base products, I tend to really get along with the Tarte products. There's been a number of products that I've loved from them over the years, mainly being their tinted moisturizer, like from their athleisure line. That was a great one. And their concealers are fabulous. I mean, they got absolutely famous for their Shape Tape concealer, and then they did a Shape Tape foundation and tons of different ones of those. I am gonna do a lighter base today and use some of their newer kind of, you know, hydrating related products. It seems to be an entire extension to their Rainforest of the Sea collection, as well as some other things. I can't really keep up with their launches. I'm not sure. But what I'm gonna be using today is the Tarte Quench Hydrating Primer. I have not used this yet just played with it on the back of my hand. But I have been using the Marajuka Tinted Hydrator and this has been fabulous. I've actually used quite a bit of it already. I've been loving it and testing it out here and there over the last few weeks. It's really great. I have this in the shade 25N Light Medium Neutral. So this is the base I'm gonna be using as well as their Hydro Concealers. Now I did just pick these up. They came in stock kind of after I did a main haul of some of their newer things. This was a later launch, but it seems like a promising concealer, really cute packaging. It matches is the cream bronzer packaging, which is super cute. So I'm gonna be trying these out today, seeing how they apply. Let's get started with the Quench Hydrating Primer. I'm gonna take a big double of blah, blah, blah. I rub that between my fingers. And the thing is, it felt really nice when I first applied it, like it feels like water, but then on the back of my hand, the wet, like dewy look went away immediately, which was weird. It kind of turned into a more matte finish. So I was like, that's weird. I wonder if it'll do that. Yeah, like look at it. Look at it as it's settling in. The wetness is kind of going away, which is fine. But, and I'm, I'm feeling like a cooling sensation, but I like my like wet dewy look, you know? I don't want it to turn matte. I just thought that was weird, weird science. Very interesting but it does give you a wash of, of coolness feeling on the skin. And then the tinted hydrator, I've really been loving. It's been a great product to use on a daily basis. It, I can't really tell the difference between tinted moisturizers, honestly. They kind of all do the same thing, but I used to love the tinted moisturizer from their athleisure line and it really just reminds me of it. It just looks like your skin, it feels good. It has a nice amount of like tinted coverage to it. It just settles into the skin so quickly and nicely. I have no complaints with this. It's a beautiful tinted moisturizer. Before I continue with the new hydro concealers, I have to go in with my CC under eye corrector. The Oh So Faithful. This is such a great product. And this is kind of where I want to begin my little chat about Tarte and hence why I'm titling this video. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Tarte? Because I just have been feeling some type of way about it and wanted to have a general chat with you guys. Tarte used to be a brand, you know, it's one of the OG brands that really went viral, I'm gonna say, on YouTube and Instagram and whatnot. It's one of those brands where when the beauty community kind of started years ago, you would just see Tarte everywhere. Like, I used to just 
comb through every Tarte product and make my dream list of products I wanted from Tarte. Everyone like on YouTube, all the beauty gurus would be posting their makeup collections on YouTube and there would always be that beautiful row of Tarte Amazonian clay blushes. And I used to be like, oh, which ones am I gonna buy? I wanted them so badly. And Tarte was just such a desired brand. I feel like everyone paid such close attention to their launches. They had these really beautiful products that were you know, promote it to be this like natural green brand. All the packaging looked very like eco and natural, even though really in comparison to what our definition of clean beauty brands are today, they don't really fall in line with that. They're pretty much just your, your regular <laughs> brand when it comes to ingredients. In general, they had a very beautiful, natural looking, sophisticated, image to all of their products when I feel like, when, when I started out on YouTube anyway. That was my general thought around Tarte. And since then, over the years, I want to say my first noticing of it was when they did the Bora Bora trip. I remember they did that huge influencer trip to Bora Bora and that was when they launched all of their pro palettes. They launched the contour palette, they launched that giant pro eyeshadow palette, I believe was around that time. Concealer's looking great so far, that blended out so nicely. Anyway, since then, I feel like they've been catering their launches to a much younger audience. That's that's kind of my, my general synopsis of what's going on. They are coming out with some really like crazy and like fun packaging. Some of their launches that I saw on the website, there was like a sugar rush collection and it's just like they're combining like makeup with toys with the packaging. That's kind of the feeling I'm getting. And some of the products like really I, I was very drawn to like this cream bronzer. I think it's beautiful. It's sleek. It's really nice looking. It's the same applies to the concealer, but I feel like they've just really gone away from what their brand used to be, which was very natural, light looking makeup. And they really kind of jumped onto that whole like Insta glam <laughs> trend, I guess. And then going into just like constant launch after launch after launch of these like really bright, and I'm gonna say gimmicky looking packaging and just like repackaging these products over and over again to cater to a younger audience. And it just makes me sad because I feel like their original products, like the original lineup is just so simple and beautiful and clean looking and really caters to the everyday gal. Like there's so many products that I've used and loved over the years that have stayed in my makeup collection. I actually did a quick little search on my YouTube channel, basically on the back end of YouTube. You can type in certain words onto your YouTube videos and see how many times they've appeared in either your title or the description box. So I just typed in Tarte in general to see how many times I've used a Tarte product in my description box, because usually I'll write it out. And Tarte alone appeared over 200 times in my YouTube videos which is crazy because I only have like six or 700 videos in total. So there's been a lot of Tarte love for me over the years and I just feel like I've been not as excited about launches they've been coming out with. It doesn't seem to be super thought out and I feel like they've just really changed or lost their brand identity and they, I don't know, it just makes me sad because they come out with all of these things and I'm like, I don't want this giant plastic watermelon shaped cheek or eye palette. Like what happened to the blushes? Like even when they started coming out with their cheek palettes, they would come out with one every holiday season and they seem to be just be getting like more and more bedazzled in their packaging, like less clean, less simple. And then like as much glitter explosion as you could put on it, that seems to be what they're coming out with. Like even the, the Park Avenue Princess bronzer, like it never used to have this gold chain on it. It used to just be this regular, you know, very earthy, animal looking packaging. The product is still beautiful, but I'm like, why did you add the chain? Like, why is everything being <laughs> bedazzled? It's just, I'm lost. I don't understand what's happening. That's basically what I wanted to say overall. I'm gonna take a quick break and put this sea breezy cream bronzer on which is beautiful. So that's just how I've been feeling in general towards Tarte. I've been less and less inclined to dive into the newer launches. I definitely stick to the original core products, if you will, and I get sad when I see them <laughs> change or get discontinued. Like I was creeping my old videos and just looking at what my old favorite blush shades used to be and one of them was Tipsy and I was like, oh my God, I mean this like bright, beautiful, corally orange blush 
would be so my jam these days and tipsy was discontinued and I don't know why that's so sad it was such a beautiful blush stage and I'm sad I got rid of it and I've had this discussion with a few people who are behind the brands not Tarte specifically I'm not in contact with anyone from Tarte like I understand from a marketing perspective why you would discontinue a product to make room for new products new innovations that kind of thing but when your brand has had such devotion to products like the blushes specifically like why would you discontinue shades why did that happen are they getting rid of them that would be devastating if tarte ever got rid of these truly because they are like when i think about tarte in its entirety like their blushes specifically are kind of what i what i think of that's like my biggest memory of tarte in the youtube space anyway i'm gonna put this down my nose Speaking of Park Avenue Princess, I am just gonna do a little dusting of that across my face. And I, I do wanna say, like, keep in mind, this does seem to be happening with a lot of brands. It's not just Tarte. I was actually watching Jackie Ina's video where she was discussing, like, her thoughts on, on brands and where they've gone, and I thought it was interesting because it's definitely something I've been, like, noticing and feeling a lot as of late. Like, even Bobbi Brown, I went to do a full face of Bobbi Brown because they were one of the only brands that I hadn't done a full face of yet and I noticed like looking on the Sephora website on their website like almost everything is gone like there's hardly any shades left I remember their blushes there there was just such an abundance of shades in their Bobbi Brown blushes and I love them so much I actually went to look when I was looking for apricot because I wanted to get it again when I was doing the recreating the makeup tutorial, but it wasn't available. There's only three shades of those blushes on the Sephora website and my jaw dropped. I'm like, what? <laughs> Where are all of these shades? The foundations, there's like hardly anything. Everything's sold out. I'm like, either you guys are about to be going through like a huge rebranding whatnot, which they aren't, I called and asked, unless they're not divulging information. But yeah, I just don't know why these like beautiful classic products are being ripped away from us. It's very sad. Clearly, I'm a creature of habit. <laughs> Maybe we're just going through the next phase of makeup. Maybe this is what it means to get old. <laughs> I'm gonna dip into that Tardist Pro Glow palette. I'm not going to use the sculpting shade, but I am gonna use their highlights. I'm gonna mix these two together. Boop, boop, boop. Another brand that I felt the same way of, and I, I think I expressed this on Instagram, was Jouer. I remember Ingrid Nilsson used to talk like forever about the Jouer tinted moisturizer. They had two versions. They had like a hydrating glowy one and then they had a matte one and I just, oh my God, I was obsessed with Jouer. They had their old like beautiful, this really cool brown packaging, you know, their original packaging. And at the time you couldn't get it in Canada. I think eventually their website started shipping to it. I don't remember where I ended up getting it. I guess they're in Sephora now, but they just had such unique products. They had unique packaging that all like could be customized and clicked together. It was beautiful. It just looked very, I'm gonna say classy lady. It just looked sophisticated to me. I'm using that word again because I can't think of anything else, but you know, it was very simple. It was very user-friendly. They had a beautiful range of shades for their highlighters and the beautiful blushes. And then, and then they kind of like sold out to that Insta glam look as well. Now everything's like the same gold gimmicky packaging. And, and now I just, I'm, I'm not excited about their new launches. And I know that's gonna sound so awful in Jouer, like if you happen to see this, I'm sorry. It's just like when you have such a unique, beautiful product, and like an entire brand around that. Like, why why shift away from that? Why is that happening? I don't know. Do you guys feel the same way? Let me know if I'm just talking out of my butt here and if I'm totally alone in this thought, but I just, I feel like I used to be so excited about so many brands and then it just completely, like, I don't know what happened to them. What happened? <laughs> the title of this video, where'd you go? Um, anyway, I'm gonna go into eyeshadow here. I'm gonna do a little, a little bit of a, a thing. This is the Tartlet Toasted Palette. I do love the shades in here. I really do. This is one of my my faves from, from Tarte that they've come out with over the years. They do have a great set of staple products, you know? I'm just taking Latte all over the lid. I believe I did a three looks using this palette back in the day. Sorry, I've gone like way too far with the shadow there. <laughs> I'm gonna take that shade on the lower lash line as well. 
I guess in general, this might sound like whiny. Like if this video comes off as whiny, I do apologize. But I think in general, what I'm feeling is that all of this like Instagram, Instagram makeup, I know that's really popular right now. And I feel like it must be very popular with younger generations, you know? Like I feel like people are using makeup at such younger ages than what I would have done. And they're obviously like much better at it. I mean, people are becoming makeup artists at 12 these days, let's be honest. Instagram and YouTube and influencers and all that has definitely helped with that shift in the, the younger generation, I think. And I just feel like a lot of brands are capitalizing on that in a way. You know, they're trying to appeal to these these younger demographics. And I guess just maybe this is showing my age. Maybe this is showing that I am approaching 30 and <laughs> that, I, that I much more prefer makeup for the everyday person. The more simple makeup, the more classy makeup, I guess. Not that that shows your class. That's not what I'm insinuating at all. But I guess I just get a little bit sad when brands just start to like cash in on the idea of Instagram makeup. Just making all of these products, coming out with these launches all the time, monthly, weekly, what have you, and really leaving their like core beautiful products that work for the everyday person behind. Is that, ugh, is that making sense? I feel like I'm not putting this into words. I'm gonna use the shade Candle on my inner corner. One product that has always been a favorite of mine from Tarte has been their mascaras. There have been years and years of like monthly favorites, yearly favorites that have featured a Tarte mascara, the Tarte Gifted Mascara, the Tarte Lifted Mascara from their Athleisure line, the brown one, absolutely beautiful. I'd actually love to have that back in my collection now. The Lights Camera Lashes. Now this is the same thing how I feel about the Park Avenue Princess Bronzer where they just added that bedazzled chain. like this packaging they literally just were like oh this perfectly fine beautiful old purple packaging let's add some sparkle to it let's bedazzle it and make it more i don't know <laughs> like this packaging is definitely different it's a different material it's harder and now it's just covered in sparkles so from what i gathered it's the same mascara just bedazzled which i found funny their mascaras are great i have no complaints about them they've they've worked for me in the past and they're super beautiful i really love this this good classic wand yeah the mascaras are a pure delight i love them a lot um on to lips i used to love their hydra quench lip balms which i don't actually have in my collection these days i wanted to try these new jelly glaze anytime lip mask it's like a little tinted lip balm but then apparently it's hydrating as if you were doing a lip mask at any given time mm, it totally smells like grapefruit oh it, it's grapefruit i didn't realize that they were scented to match their name and flavor i love that mm. that's all the makeup i have currently to finish off this tart full face but i'm going to continue blabbing as i do my brows <laughs> I suppose to round off this this whiny rant of mine is in general i just get a little bit sad when brands that i have loved and used for years start to slip away and i find in general because of the beauty climate online i feel like you're either going on one side or the other like there's brands who are being very concerned with the sustainability environmental effects of the beauty industry and are really just being like thoughtful and thorough with their brand identity and the products that they're launching a few ones just off the top of my head like victoria beckham beauty you know coming out with very few minimal products and being super mindful of a number of things in concern with the environment and not overproducing and all that hourglass is another amazing brand who is very thorough and minimal and thoughtful with the products that they come out with they're not like bombarding the world with all of their launches they're really sticking to their core and knowing what products they produce and that they do very well. Like Mac, on the other hand, is another brand who I'm kind of feeling similar towards where they just, I mean, they've always done this, where they just come out with so many launches that you just can't keep up. You can't keep up with their products. And I feel like just Tarte is one of those brands who used to have such a solid core just such solid launches and now they're really going in towards that constant new release, like what's new, what's shiny, what's sparkly um, over anything else. And that's just kind of how I'm feeling. I'm kind of feeling a little 
bit of a of a sad moment for Tarte because I just used to just feel like there used to be a brand that had so many staple products and not that those products have really gone away but they've just been shifting from pushing. If anyone else wants to wrap up what I've said here in a more eloquent manner, feel free to do so in the comments. But also let me know if you're feeling the same way. I'm curious to know how you're feeling about a lot of these brands these days. You know, we're just inundated with so much <laughs> beauty. <laughs> so many different products, so many new releases. And you know, it's interesting to see how brands are shifting their marketing strategies and the products that they're coming out with. And I'm curious to know what your guys' thoughts are on a few of those. This was my little overview on Tarte specifically. I feel like I'll be talking more about it in the future for different brands. So just wanted to hear your guys' general thoughts on the matter. I'm going to briefly shut up and try and finish this. This takes such concentration for me. Ugh. All right guys, well the brows are on. That's the finished makeup look. This was my full face of Tarte slash my what happened to Tarte discussion. I used a few of the products that I have had in my collection for many, many years, some very old favorites, as well as some of my new favorite products from the brand that they've launched. And I just generally wanted to have this chat because I've been feeling some type of way, this kind of way about a number of brands. And I'd love to hear from you guys and what your thoughts are on Tarte in general. Am I just completely off my rocker? Are you guys feeling the same way? And if you guys are feeling this way about any other brands, I'd love to just have a chat with you in the comments down below. So this is the finished makeup look, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos from moi, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow for a new video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.